I've often heard it said that the hardest command to keep in all of life is the command that God gave to repent. It's such a difficult thing to do. Repentance seems, just means that change of mind that brings about a change of life. Now, changing our mind is not all that difficult. But the second part, changing our life, changing how we live and what we do makes it so difficult. When Paul was on Mars Hill, speaking on that occasion, in Acts chapter 17, verses 30 and 31, he said, In this times of ignorance God winked at, but now commanded all men everywhere to repent, because he hath appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he has given assurance unto all men, and he has raised him from the dead. Here's a command that God's given to us to repent. And there's four different things that I want us to notice very briefly about this idea of repentance here. Number one, to notice it is a divine command. This isn't a command that just comes from the Apostle Paul. It comes from God himself. Because that's what Paul said. He says, but now God commanded all men everywhere to repent. So God's the one who's given that command to us. And we need to realize that a failure to repent is not because we're objection to what somebody's told me I need to do, but it's an objection to God and to His command for us. It was a command that was received and preached by the forerunner of Christ, John the Baptist, who preached to the people, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And then Jesus came and preached the very same thing. Then in Mark chapter 6 and verse 12, when Jesus sent the twelve out, he gave that, that command that they were to preach to the people to repent of their sins. And then it was added by Christ also in the Great Commission when he commanded his disciples to go into all the world. And in Luke's account of it, in Luke chapter 24, verses 27 and 28, Luke brought out the fact that repentance and forgiveness of sins was to be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And so this is a command that comes to us from God, and that makes it more important for us to realize the need and importance of repentance. But secondly, he points out here, there's the universal necessity of it. Because it says God has commanded all men everywhere to repent. There's not a one who's exempt from that. Somebody said, well, you know, it says all men, and, and, and I'm a lady, so I don't have to... Uh, no. The word that he uses there is not the word near for the male, but it's the word anthropos, mankind. So it applies to every one of us. And so all are commanded to repent. And then he says, all men everywhere. And someone said, well, that was just those people that lived over in Palestine. They had, no, it's for all men everywhere. And so every one of us come under that command of God. It is a universal necessity. But why is it a necessity? that I should repent. It's a necessity for all people to repent because all people are guilty of sin. Romans chapter 3 and verse 23. And sin will destroy us spiritually for all eternity. And so we have a need to repent. But it's also a necessity because of the fact that sin is so destructive in life. It not only destroys the soul, but it destroys our life here of the physical variety. And then thirdly, he points out here, it is a present obligation that we have. I like the fact that it begins and talks about it. It says, at the time of this ignorance, God winked at, but now he commands all men to repent. You see, there was a time when God, because of his mercy, had not required it of those people to repent. At that time, God winked at. That is, he overlooked it. But now, that lets us know things have changed. And now we have to repent. He's commanded that of all people. And so now, because of the past mercies of God, but also because of the present revelations that God's let us know today, we need to repent. And then fourthly, there's the fact that we're compelled by the realization that there's going to be a judgment someday as to why we need to repent. It says, because he hath appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained. Whereof he's given assurance unto all men that he's raised him from the dead. Notice there about that. God has appointed a day. There's a specific time that God has set when he's going to judge the world. But not only is it a specific time, but it's also given to all people that we're all going to stand before God in judgment. He's going to judge the entire world. So again, every one of us will stand before him for judgment. 
And then the standard for that has been announced. He's going to judge all men in righteousness. In righteousness. Well, what does that mean? Well, righteousness has to do with God's commands to us. For all of God's commands, the psalmist said, are righteousness. And so we're going to be judged by that. John chapter 12 and verse 48. Jesus said, He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The words that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last days. And so we're going to be judged by that. And the judge has been named. We're going to be judged by Christ. And we know that, we're given assurance of that because God has risen him up from the dead. So assurance has been given to us of that. And so as you think about it, it's, talking, it's a divine command from God. It's something that's a universal necessity for every one of us. It's a present obligation that we have. And we need to do it because we're going to be judged someday. So the question then simply becomes, have I done what God told me to do in becoming his child? Prior to my repentance, I need to believe in Christ as the Son of God, then repent of my sins. Confess him before men and be buried with him in baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And then with the determination and help of God to live my life, faithful to him even unto death. Tonight, if you have not done what God has required, if you haven't obeyed his commands in becoming his child, you need to do that tonight. If you've done that but you haven't followed up on that command of living faithful to him, you need to correct your life tonight, repenting of those sins and praying to God for the forgiveness you need. And so tonight, we're encouraging you. If you need in any way to respond to the invitation of Christ, do that now while we stand and while we sing.